welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys. We're going to be discussing the summer transfer window by playing a game of sign or don't sign. Now I know that's not the catchiest title ever, basically this follows on from my keep or sell video that I did recently on the channel, but what we're going to be doing today is talking about all the different players that have been linked to Barca in one way or another, they're people that we hear in the media, and we're going to be discussing whether we should or shouldn't try to sign them? Should we even be interested in some of these players? What's the likelihood of getting some of them this summer? And as well, with a quite significant conclusion coming at the end. And as always, guys, I want to know your preferences too. So have a watch, look at all the players... And let's do this. Now, I do want to say, first of all, guys, a very big thank you indeed to Anaya, who has contributed there with a super thanks on the channel. Thank you indeed that he was talking about the offer coming in for Ferran Torres. Are we going to have more money to spend this summer? How much will we have to go out and try and get some of the players that we are going to talk about in today's videos? Thank you there very much for that. But let's kick right off here with a defensive name linked with the club, Jeremy Frimpong. Now, as I've spoken about before with this man. I think he's a top talent. I think he's had an absolutely wonderful season at Bayer Leverkusen and he is a top, top player on the right. But personally for me, I wouldn't sign him. I don't believe here that Barca should be going for him simply because I don't think we have a role for him in the team. We do not play with wing backs. We don't play there with our full backs really, really high up the field. Almost as wingers, we will have a right winger and we will need a full back in behind them to help complement that side. So I think here, if we did sign Frimpong, one, it would be very expensive and then we'd be expecting him to show the same quality, the same form in a completely different role. And that panics me. So I'm going to say no on him, even though he's a great player. Now, there has also been plenty of links as well circulating over the past few months, really, linking us to Amadou Onana, the 22-year-old Everton and Belgian midfielder. Now, this seems to be a player here that Deco absolutely loves. He really likes his profile. He would like to see him as part of that Barcelona midfield in a defensive midfield role there, in a double pivot, really, alongside Frank de Jong, who'd imagine. And I understand the point of view. You know, defensively, he is top quality. He does have things there that we don't really really have in our midfield in terms of recovering that ball, in terms of having that real physical presence. I can understand looking at him for something a bit different, but two problems with this. Number one, he'd be very expensive. I think that any player that you try and sign from a Premier League club, it's going to cost you. Everton have already put a 70 million price tag on their centre-back Branthwaite, so by no means would Onana be cheap. And I also just don't really know again, even though it is something different, even though he has characteristics there that our midfield doesn't have, I'm not sure about him again, coming from the Premier League, coming from Everton, and then being forced into a Barcelona team. You know, very, very contrasting styles, different kinds of teams there that you've got to be involved in. And I'm not convinced at all about Onana either. Then, there's Angelo Stieler, the German international there, Stuttgart midfielder, who apparently Hansi Flick is really, really keen on. He likes his profile, he likes the characteristics that he had. Now, this is somebody who I could understand more about wanting to have in our midfield there. It looks like a better a fit in my opinion. I would certainly consider him more. What the problem with this is though for me, it's the price tag. Reportedly now Stuttgart have come out and said they want a minimum this summer if they were going to sell Steeler of 50 million euros. Now I would not pay that. If that is the price tag I would say do not sign. If it can be lower than that, if you're looking at maybe probably half the price tags, it's probably not going to happen because Steeler is an exciting play. He's a very very big talent. I'm intrigued because Flick likes him but I would not be paying huge money at all for him right now. Which brings us to Mikel Marino. Now, I would say probably, looking at that price tag for Steeler, that makes Marino, in my mind, more likely. Because, again, it's a different kind of player. We're talking here about all different kinds of midfield profiles, which, on the one hand, does concern me a bit. You know, surely we should have the same mindset. If we want one certain kind of player, all the players should be the same kind of profile. That's not really happening right now at Barca. Marino is a different kind of midfielder as well. It does look as though he's going to be a lot cheaper maybe 25, maybe 30 million euros there from Real Sociales in the final year of his contract. So I would say right now, Marino for me, more of the likely option. I can understand why we're looking at him. I can understand why we're thinking about him. He would add to our midfield and he would be more sign in my mind. But you'd have to keep that price down. You would definitely have to keep that price tag down in order to keep me willing to sign him. And then there's Bruno Guimaraes, the midfielder for Brazil and Newcastle. And he has been linked to Barca plenty of times 
in the past. We do really, really like him as a player. There's also a few suggestions here that Newcastle this summer might have to sell in order to get their FFP in order. The restrictions there in the Premier League are getting a lot, lot tougher now. It's good to see that maybe everybody could be on a similar kind of playing field because here in La Liga, of course, the financial restrictions for fair play are absolutely unbelievable. But again, guys, the profiles are all different here. You know, Bruno has an entirely different profile again, and we've got lots of quality midfielders. You know, we do not lack quality in midfield here. It's not like we're desperate to bring midfielders in. What we need is one certain kind of player, one certain specific kind of role there that needs to be filled in defensive midfield. Players there with defensive capabilities. Bruno, for me, doesn't really have that. So I have to say again, for big money, I would not sign him. But then there's Joshua Kimmich. Now, this is definitely more difficult in my mind right now because I would say not many clubs around the world would say no to signing a player like Joshua Kimmich. He is an exceptional talent there. He's got quality, he's got experience, and he has proven himself at the highest level. And especially here, now we have a coach like Hansi Flick, knows him well, has a system there that would certainly benefit and suit Joshua Kimmich. You can understand these links. But in my mind... It all depends on how much, because at the end of the day here, we're still talking about, even despite the quality, a 29-year-old player who is entering the final year of his deal. So I wouldn't pay massive, enormous money here to sign Kimmich. I don't think that would be a good use of the money. I don't think there that would be justifiable, given his contract situation and given the fact there that he is 29 years old. He's not over the hill, but you have to take all of this into account. And I think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, if Barca do approach Bayern for negotiations, are we definitely looking at this summer? Or is there even a part of Barca that are thinking, OK, we'd love to have Kimmich. You know, he would be a good player. He would add to our squad. Why don't we actually... Wait until next summer. You know, maybe on a free transfer. That would be a whole different equation there, a whole different story. And maybe right now, because these links have gone quiet just for a minute, Barca are considering their next move. But what about Nico Williams then? Moving on here to the attack-minded players, players here that can really impact the game in the final third. Now, Nico, for me, he is a big, big talent. And not only that, but I could see how he could actually fit into our team. I could see him as a Barcelona winger. I think he's direct. I think we need a player like that there who's willing to have pace and run at defenders and cause problems there from wider areas. And I do like that he's fully capable of playing on the left-hand side. We also desperately need a left winger. So I can understand this. This is a good player, it's a good profile, and he fits Barca. The price tag, it is a bit expensive because with Athletic Club, you always got to go and pay the release clause. There's no negotiation there because they know it's going to be tough to replace him because of their transfer policy. So the price of me still is a little bit expensive at just over 50 million euros. But I would say sign right now, based on what we've seen from Nico in La Liga and on the international stage as well, I think he does have the quality, I think he does certainly suit us, and I would sign him if we can get the money together, if we can still sign him and a good defensive pivot, I'd go for it. Bring him in and watch how he can affect the game for us. However, Nico is not the only left winger who's been linked to Barca. What about Luis Diaz, the Liverpool and Colombia left winger there? He's 27 years old right now, turns 28 in January. So I would say already there, Luis Diaz, he's kind of exploded onto the scene there at Liverpool, hasn't he, over the past few seasons, but... He's no youngster. You know, he is getting on now a little bit in his career. Now, this is a player, apparently, that Deco really, really likes. He would be Deco's preference, it seems, on that left side for Barca. And what we also know for sure is that Luis Diaz would love to come here. His father says it very, very regularly. Luis Diaz has always dreamt of playing for Barca. And even at Liverpool, he would gladly move on to accept that challenge. But again... I'm just not convinced. I think any player, again, coming from the Premier League, especially coming from Liverpool, it's going to be expensive. It's going to be really, really pricey. Probably even more there than Nico is. And again, he's several years older there. You're losing several years of value. And for a player who is very good, he's a very, very good player. At times, his end product, you know, the final decision can be a little bit erratic. But he is a top player. But I just still wouldn't spend massive money on him. I don't think that would be a good signing. At the point where Barca are right now, I would not take that risk. And we'll speak. Speaking of big money and speaking of risk taking, we have to talk about Danny Olmo because I have to admit, guys, I thought Danny Olmo was done. I thought we were not going to be linked with him anymore. I thought he'd been well and truly removed from our transfer list. But just now we're starting to hear a few rumours popping up again. You know, Deco speaking with agents. Deco again seems to really like Danny Olmo, the kind of vibe that he has. I don't know. And I just don't really understand it because, again, we're talking about huge money, over 50, over 60 million maybe, to sign Danny Olmo. 
Why? Why on earth would we do that there? You've got so many different players that you could look at for less money and who, in my opinion, would suit the club much more. Because under Hansi Flick, he wants wingers there. He wants natural players out wide that can hurt you in wide areas. Danny Olmo's not that player. He's not the kind of player there that is going to do the same kind of thing that Nico Williams is. So I don't really understand here why we're still pursuing Danny Olmo, why we would consider spending huge money on him when it doesn't really seem to align with what we're doing. We have to take a step forward here. We have to understand the kind of system that we're trying to play next season. And for me, Danny Olmo should not be a part of that for massive money. Money, don't take those risks. There's no need for it. Such an unnecessary signing it would be, in my opinion. But what about Xavi Simmons here? Let's discuss this young man. Because in complete contrast there to somebody like Danny Olmo, for me, Xavi Simmons would be such a low-risk signing. And I think of Barca right now, given our financial situation, given the fact here we're only just starting to come out of it really, really slowly. Next summer we're saying, well, we'll be well and truly back then. But now, we're not quite there yet. So so why would you mess around? Why would you go out and really risk big, big money signings when you don't need to do that right now? Let's be smart. Let's be intelligent. Let's be clever. Let's look around at what's out there. Let's look at talent. Let's look at profiles. Chavi Simmons is somebody who can suit this team, who can be explosive, can certainly be the kind of player that Hansi Flick needs in his team. And if he's available, we know there's lots of clubs interested, but we also know he'd love to join Barca. So act upon that. Go and talk to him there. Go and look into a loan deal. Go and look into a deal there that you don't have to pay very much for at all. And you add so much quality to your team. I would definitely say sign there on Chavi Simmons when it comes to a loan deal. But I've got to be honest with you guys right here. When you look at all the players that we've discussed in today's video, the one thing that really jumps out to me right now is I still have concern about the players that we are targeting. There are not many players that I see right here that Barca are being linked to, that Barca are talking to, that Barca are looking at, that actually are players that we should be. I think here we still need to sit down. Hansi Flick needs to be very, very vocal about what he needs. He needs to make sure the club understand, OK, that will work in my team, but that won't work. He needs to make sure here he's specifying these are the kinds of profiles I need. He's mentioned Angelo Stila. He's brought a name there to the table. He's looking at different options, of course. Course, but Barca and especially Deco, I think he's got to ease off a bit. I think here Deco cannot take such a big and important role in the signings. I know that's his job. I know that he's there to oversee everything, but he is there to assist the coach. He is there to help the coach. He is there to basically get us what we need. That's his job. I don't think he should be handpicking all the players here because some of the targets that we're hearing, some of the players that we're being linked to, they still concern me and they are still high risk players in my opinion. But hey guys, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think in the comments down below here. Based on the players that we talked about, what players would you like to see at the club? What players, in your opinion, should we be looking to target? And do let me know all of those preferences down below. I do hope you have enjoyed the video on the channel today. And I will see you soon for lots more coming up. Thank you indeed, though, for watching. But until next time, yeah, as always, Vishka, Hilbasa. Uh -huh.